everyone, and welcome to the Florida Aviation Network. We are here at the Central Florida Aerospace Academy. We are broadcasting live and in the clear from the Aerospace Academy, celebrating the 48th annual Sun and Fun. And I am truly honored and so excited that our next guest, finally arrived and I'm so excited by police escort. So you know I'm gonna ask about that. So Mr. Fred Hyde, soon to be Dr. Fred, welcome. We're so glad to Thank have you, you here. Much. All right, so you know I've gotta start with that. Sure. Um, you, I know that you were running a little bit late. Um, sun and fun is crazy with traffic. Everybody from all over the nation is here right now at the grounds of Sun and Fun to celebrate the air show. And you had to fight through traffic to get here for this interview. Okay. How was that police escort, Fred? So, so actually it was, a, it was more of a cone escort. Ah. Um, so I came up Pipkin and um, tried to follow the rules. People were driving on the right-hand side of the road, left-hand side of the road. <laughs> and, and you know, because you're superintendent of school, somebody's going to see you and, and say, how come he can drive that way? Right. Um, and then I called my secretary asking, you know, I was having so much difficulty getting here. I said, please let them know I'm running late. I'm stuck. I said, I haven't moved at all. And she said, well, we're going to send a golf cart for you. I said, don't do that, please. <laughs> then they said they're going to send a police escort. So I convinced them not to do that. But when I got to the cone areas where you couldn't turn right. left to come up this side road off, off um, is it Medulla? Yes. And um, the officer there let me through. He knew who I was, so. That is awesome. Well, but lesson learned a lesson for next learned, year. A lesson learned. Mr. Hyde, we thank you for being here with us My at pleasure. the Florida Aviation Network. My and pleasure. you are superintendent of schools for Polk County Schools, which is the seventh largest district in the state of Florida. And okay, so I've got to start by asking you, tell us a little bit, because I know you're no stranger to Florida. So tell us a little bit how you got back here to Polk County. We are so thrilled to have you. And sure. I know the teachers are. Um, I'm a teacher by trade, so thank you for what you do. You. Um, but how did you get back here? Uh, you know, so I, I was in the state of Florida and had spent 20 some odd years in public education here, okay. or 16 years in public education here, and went, ended up going out of state for a superintendency okay. and uh, spent seven years in Illinois. During that time, always had an eye on coming back to Florida. If I wanted to find the right school district, the right time, I have a son. Um, at the time, previously, we had thought about coming back, and I had applied and was a finalist in, a, in another district. Okay. Ultimately withdrew <clears throat> because my son did not want to leave his friends behind. And you have to be considerate, and as, many, as much as you move around for this type of position, right. you want to be there and create a stable environment for your family. So I withdrew as a finalist, and then when this opportunity presented itself, and I had several people reach out to me, and I really started to research Polk because it's an, incredibly, it's an incredible opportunity here in Polk. We are the second um, largest school district in the nation as it relates to our career tech ed and our academy programs as far as certifications and national endorsements. Yeah. Um, so there's great opportunities there. 12 colleges and, and universities here locally. The, the fastest growing county in the state of Florida, which brings both a challenge and opportunities for us. So, so I really looked at it and looked at my skill set based off what others had talked to me about. And this was a great opportunity for us. So. So we were all in, but we did have a family meeting first and said, I can't withdraw again. So you got to be committed. Awesome. And we were all in. So we moved here as a family and we're thrilled to be here. Awesome. And I do not miss negative 30 degree temps. <laughs> yes, we do. We do have better weather. Much better weather. That, that is true. Now, what grade is your son in? He's a freshman. He's at George Jenkins. Okay. Um, when we were first looking to come here, I actually encouraged him heavily to consider the program here at CFAA. Yes. And because we have a we have a long family history in aviation, and so we can touch on that later. Oh yeah, we're gonna okay. I just made but I tried to get him to, to look at this program, and, and because it was his freshman year, didn't know anybody. He just wanted to go to his right. neighborhood school, and so he attends George Jenkins. Okay. And he's doing very well there, and awesome. we're very proud of him. And loving it. Yes. All right. Now you just said something. <laughs> Obviously, the Florida Aviation Network. And we are here at, and I'm very biased, but I'm going to tell you straightforwardly, uh, the best career academy in Polk County, which is the Central Florida Aerospace Academy. And we are broadcasting live from here. But tell me a little bit about, um, you said you had a long history in aviation. Tell yeah. us about that. So I actually grew up in a family. Uh, my father was, both my father and my stepfather were Air Force veterans. Uh, my father, when he left, he was an engineer by trade. And he actually was one of the initial people who engineered and developed flight simulators. So he worked for Pan Am, he worked for Eastern, worked for Lufthansa. Oh, he would travel the world. He'd be away for months at a time helping you know, new um, 
new um, simulators to, to be established. Okay. He did all the, all the problem solving on it. And then after a while, he back, came back to the States and he set up his own company. And we sold rotables, engines, avionics, everything, um, from everything from a 707 to a 777 and out of Miami. It was called Air Traders Inc. And after September 11th, the ad industry kind of yeah. really got compressed. Right. And so he said, you know what, I'm, I'm eligible to retire. And, and he sold the business and he retired. And he's doing well in Miami, in Fort Lauderdale. But so I grew up in that industry. I grew up delivering and working for my father's company. Um, so we would do, you know, you'd get a call that a, a plane was AOG, airplane on ground. It can't right. take off, you know, and we had the right instrumentation. And so I'm off and running to an airport on the tarmac with an escort to get, the, get it there for the mechanics to swap out. And so if you've ever sat on a plane for a while for a mechanical issue, you were probably waiting on someone like me to get there. <laughs> to get the part there on time. Okay, so you're um, no stranger to escorts. I'm not, I'm not. You know, I mean, but that, that, the good kind, of course, I'm obviously. Not, yes. Uh, no, but that, that is awesome. And did you fly? So your dad, you did simulators and things like that. So did you have an interest as a young man? Do you have an interest now? Did you fly those simulators? What did you think? Tell me. I crashed a lot of simulators oh, as yeah, a child. Oh. Uh, as my dad, my dad would have to work all kinds of crazy hours. And um, because of our situation, you know, when my parents divorced, we would spend weekends with my father and whatnot. Right. So if he had to go in that weekend to troubleshoot something, he would put my younger brother and I in a simulator <laughs> and uh, turn us loose while he was outside working. And so we got a lot of flight time. That's awesome. I, I also got a lot of ground time <laughs> as a result. But okay. I, I did not have, I have a growing interest now. Okay. Um, simply because of my involvement with different types of programs over the years and right. ROTC and, and whatnot. But in this program here is just absolutely phenomenal. We're, yeah. we're so excited to have a program that really covers every aspect of the industry. Yeah. Um, if you think about what we offer here at CFAA, we, we do everything from, like we said, that you can get your airframe and power, power plant yeah. certification and work towards that licensing. We've got students here working on earning their pilot's license and learning how to do uh, general operations of yeah. an airport. And then we have students learning how to fly drones. I was so impressed when I got here. When they gave me a tour of this facility, there was a young lady, um, I think she's 16, and she has her own company. She has a company based out of Florida and a company based out of California, um, if I recall correctly, where she flies drones remotely and uh, takes photos for realtors. So I went home that night and I'm telling my family about this story and I looked at my son and said, what are you doing for a living at the age of 15? <laughs> you, need to, you need to start Wait earning. <laughs> you need to stop being a consumer and become a producer. Start earning some money here. But the opportunities are just endless, but the excitement yeah. that our kids demonstrated and that they each had a real story behind why they chose the path they had. Yeah. And that's exactly what Career Academies are about. And this one in particular, um, we've actually now made progress towards a second location here in Polk County. Really? Because right now there's a geographic limitation yeah. for some of our students. Right. You know, we have students, our, our district is very, very large and it can take, um, we have students, for example, at Frostproof High School would love to come attend the program, but it's an hour and 45 minutes each way. Right. And so we're moving a program closer to them. So it's nice to be able to expand a high interest, high needs yeah. program in our county to meet the demands, not only the industry demands, but also the needs of our students and interests there. So. What was it, um, again, because you, I know that you had served in uh, Sarasota, I know that you were mm -hmm. in Duval, um, you also have been in Tallahassee, so you certainly no stranger to the, the bureaucracy or the bureaucratic part of education as well. Yes, but um, what was it, and I think for the teachers mm -hmm. that are watching, because you're speaking to the teachers as well, um, what was it that interested you in Polk County? Mm -hmm. um, was it something, was it the people, was it the programs? I mean, obviously Florida, we know that get, that's a gimme. Um, certainly the size is, like you said, it's an opportunity, but was there there's something, you had been a finalist in another county, was there something here mm -hmm. that stands out in your mind and the I reason why? Sure, there actually was, and I tell this story quite frequently. When we were first here and interviewing, they toured you, right. and unfortunately we were in the midst of COVID during that first year yeah. while they were interviewing applicants, and they would put us on a tour bus, and they had community representatives come on and off the bus as we toured the county because we couldn't get out and actually go into schools to visit unfortunately right. um, so my wife joined me on that trip and what we found and what really sold us on Polk is, is again Polk was unique it has some great opportunities but it was the sense of true commitment that we heard of every single person they put on that bus 
had a sincere and legitimate interest and in, in concern for public education and a commitment to excellence. And so when you heard that, and you heard that consistently resonating amongst all your stakeholders, whether it was a city employee or a county employee or a mayor, that's what drew us to Polk because we said this is a good place because everybody values public education and that commitment's gonna be there. And now what we need to do is honor their interests and make those things happen for them. Right. So. And you, you had, you know, I know as, as a, a person with children as well, mm -hmm. you know, the, that, is our, that is our most precious commodity mm -hmm. and making sure that our children get the absolute best education that they possibly can. And I know George Jenkins has several career academies as well. Correct. And really truthfully, um, I know that Polk County um, in the state of Florida leads the way when it comes to that career, the career academies and the career education. That's correct. Um, now, I have a question because we're here on the grounds of Sun and Fun. We're celebrating mm -hmm. uh, our 48th annual Sun and Fun. Have you ever been? I have not. And interestingly enough, I invited my father to come up along with my stepmother to visit because he's the aviation buff. Yes, you know? yes. And unfortunately, they just bought a house so they're in the middle of moving. He said he'd love to, but they're just too busy right now. Right. So he will be here next year with me. Okay. Um, but I have heard s countless stories from people, and, and this was one of the events they said, I must attend. Right. But they said, not because it's, it's a professional obligation, you must attend because it's an amazing experience. It is. That people flying from all over the world, but the level of, again, the engagement from our community, and you know, to be stuck in traffic, it says something. You can't go to a Detroit Tigers game or come to Sun and Fun without hitting just exactly. ridiculous amounts of traffic. But that's a strong testament to what, what's going yeah. on here. And, and I think it's amazing because it is an industry that oftentimes gets overlooked and, and an industry that really has a high need yeah. in various areas. So it's, it's great for marketing. And it was, as I pulled in, I was thrilled to see so many school classes here from yes. around the state. Um, visiting or other states visiting to kind of get a sense of aviation and what it can what it can bring for them Well, I love it. Um, I think you know what you said is correct is that you know Sun and Fun truly it's about empowering engaging igniting mm -hmm. exciting and it's not it's it's not just about the one aspect of aviation right. everyone thinks about flying but right. like you said even with your father we're talking about the military service mm -hmm. and, and thank you to your family for their service we truly honor our veterans and those that are serving now um, here at the Florida Aviation Network but it really is about sharing the wealth and opening and I think one of the things that we try to do as educators is break mm -hmm. down the walls of the classrooms Correct. because we know that education doesn't necessarily take place in our rooms mm -hmm. it's when we can break down those walls and we can bring the world Absolutely. into the classroom and what a better way to do that than sun and fun and bringing the world of aviation to Correct. all of the students not just in Polk County Right. but also to all of the surrounding counties, Correct. which is fantastic. So have you had a chance, now I have to ask, has your secretary given you, have you been given time to come look? I have. And see, okay, so tell me, I had to ask, you know, because yes. we know the secretaries run things, Fred. Yes, that is now, true. I know that, she runs your schedule, I know that. Um, what, what stands out? So you've never been, and I know that's a loaded question. So literally I got out of the truck and walked right in here. So I have not been out yet. So you haven't been out they yet. They are actually waiting for me to take me on a golf cart and get me a golf cart and take me around to show me off, show off everything. Oh my park. goodness. Okay. So. But I know for a fact, I'm, I'm sure that you've heard our headliners overhead, right? I have. Okay. And so that's coming. So are they going to give you the time? after you leave this interview to actually go see? So they have put that in your schedule? They did, she gave me, she blocked she me out of a period of time, yes ma'am. <laughs> but you are absolutely, you could not have said it better. Uh, Miss Winchester is my professional assistant, yes. uh, executive assistant, and she has an incredibly difficult job. Being new to Polk County, are you but a handful, also, Fred? I am. Okay, I am. I'm just asking. Because it's hard to manage your schedule. You're new and everybody wants a piece of you, but right. she also knows that I like being present. I like being out in the public. I like being in schools. So she has to juggle that yeah. for me, plus making sure I'm home for my family at times. That's right. Um, you know, so she works that schedule with my wife as well. So I, That's awesome. I have two taskmasters that, that stay I guess, on top of things. I guess we need to say thank you. Thank you to Mrs. Winchester. Yes. Thank you. Now, let me ask you, I would be um, certainly, and I also want you to know, um, having been a former teacher with Polk County Schools, um, I want you to know, Fred, that you serve some of the best teachers, if not the best in the nation. So I want you to thank know you. that. Um, but what is your... 
As a superintendent, um, your mission, your vision, it's all about growth mindset and growing. Mm -hmm. What is your mission? What is your vision for Polk mm -hmm. County? What do you see? Um, what is your, your, you know, your two-year plan, your five-year plan, mm -hmm. your ten-year plan? Because we're going to keep you. Sure. We're going to keep you here, by the uh, way. Yes, ma'am. So, what what is your vision? Oh, so uh, there, there's quite a bit there, I mean, because we are just in the midst of a new five-year strategic plan. Yeah. I was very fortunate to come into a district and be able to set a new five-year plan because then you can own it. You have a greater ownership and, and you can kind of establish your message, your mission, your vision for students that way. So expanding our programs, you know, regionalizing programs, our high needs, high interest, but also being flexible enough to adapt to new industry needs. Okay. There are emerging industries and jobs that we've always said, we've been saying for 10 years, we're preparing kids today for jobs that don't even exist yet. That's and true. so making, ensuring that our students will have the appropriate independent interpersonal skills, collaborative skills, work development skills, they can, they can apply them all over. Uh, the big vision, if you think about a stock market floor when, when it's going crazy and it's chaotic and people are yelling and screaming, it, and it's gonna sound silly, but that's why I wanted high school graduation. But I want that to be the people sitting on the end of the stage. So as my graduates come off, we hand them a diploma. That diploma and that student is of such high value that everyone wants him or her. Everyone wants to compete for them. Whether it's the military, whether it's a trade, whether it's, whether it's a, a college or a university, that's what we want to create here. Yeah. Is that there's a belief that what we do here means something. We started with portrait of a graduate. What are the characteristics that, that all of our stakeholders expect of a high school graduate? And now we're pro backwards problem solving. How do we attain that end result? So that's the goal, that's the mission, that's the vision. And to give every student's opportunities to flourish and grow in high interest areas yeah. that they have a sincere interest in, yeah. not that we're pushing them towards. And we have to stop being gatekeepers. We have to really open up the opportunities that's for our right. kids. That's right, and you know what? I think that um, any educator would say that we um, you know, our job is to engage, inspire, right? Um, and, um, and like you said, open those floodgates mm -hmm. and let them step into themselves. Absolutely. And that is just, um, I, I want you to know, Fred, we are, we are so thrilled in Polk mm -hmm. County uh, to, to have you here. Um, thank you for your thank love. You. Thank you for your, you know, your love um, just for our students. If there was one thing, I'm going to ask you as we get ready to close, mm -hmm. what is one thing you would say, because our teaching profession right now, we've got a lot of teachers leaving, mm -hmm. um, we've got a lot of teachers that are disillusioned, a lot of teachers that are very frustrated, um, not with what they do, because they love mm -hmm. what they do. It's like you said, and like I said, the bureaucracy. Mm -hmm. What is one thing you would say to the teachers? What is one thing you would say to the students? Mm -hmm to inspire them so from their superintendent. To our teachers, I, I would encourage them to continue to be resilient and to stay focused on the reality that it's going to get better. It is already getting better. Salaries are going up, we're, we're exiting COVID and, and <laughs> the, our situation will change. And, yeah. and we are going to be in a unique position to re-engage our nation in the value of public education and why the teaching profession is such, so, such a valuable profession. This is not for everyone. This is, there it's is. it's not for the faint of heart. <laughs> it is not. It, it is, you, there's no such thing as a cookie cutter teacher model or, 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 or mold. You know, this is absolutely a calling because what we deal with in every given day between the legislative requirements, even district requirements, our school requirements, the compliance driven aspects, the accountability, that comes partially with the territory but they're dealing with social emotional issues on a daily basis with students and they're dealing with staff and they're dealing with themselves now um, in a post COVID environment. How do we make sure that we're supporting our staff, their social emotional well-being and health. And so I would just tell them continue to be resilient. It's going to get better. It's already getting better. And, and we understand what their needs are and we want to be respectful of them, empower them as professionals and let them do the work. But we're going to continue to be their champions because somebody has to be. Thank you. What, what teachers bring to school every day, in the classroom every day, I have never, ever met an educator, and I've been around 22 years in public education, and I've worked in a lot of at-risk settings, and I've worked in high-performing settings. I have never met an educator who doesn't want to be the best they can possibly be. That's right. And who does not want to serve children. Yep. And so long as you have that servant leadership heart and that attitude, you know, we're still in a good place. Yeah. And so we, we have to continue to highlight that and defend our profession yeah. and really hold it up to the light so, so that people will honor 
and respect us. And we saw a lot of that at the beginning of COVID. People were like, oh my gosh, I never knew how hard you were working and thank you to teachers. And that sentiment is still out there. It's just gotten a little overshadowed by some other issues. So, Fred, thank you for thank being you. a champion for us yeah. as a teacher. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. You are the right man for the job. <laughs> they were you. right to vote you and I just thank you. unanimously voted in. Thank and you. welcome to Polk County Schools. We're so honored to have you here. Thank you, thank you for being here at the Florida Aviation thank you for Network. Me. This is awesome. I want you to enjoy sun and fun. <laughs> I promise you're going to want to come back. Yes, and then you've got to go to Air Venture. That's yes. at Oshkosh. So I'm going to put a plug in. And ladies and gentlemen, my name is Lori Bradner. I'm with the Florida Aviation Network. We are broadcasting live and in the clear from the Central Florida Aerospace Academy, where we are celebrating the 48th annual Sun and Fun. Thank you for joining us.